Hello and uh, welcome to our leadership podcast. What I'd like to do today is to talk about two very important skills that are required in leadership. And, and when they work in tandem, they, they, they form an invincible duo. It's like a tennis player with a good forehand and a good backhand. You need both uh, to succeed. And the first skill is that of listening. Now, uh, most people will say, look, I'm, I'm a good listener. But I'm not talking about listening in the natural sense. Uh, you say, look, I don't interrupt people when they talk. I, I give them a chance to talk. No, I'm, I'm talking about more than that. Uh, on the one side, I'm talking about listening to the heart, listening to the condition of the heart. And then on the other, I'm listening to things that, that are in the environment, listening to what other people are saying, listening, filling in the gaps that are not obvious. So let's look at the first one, listening to the heart. The Bible says that out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you hang around with someone long enough, they are going to betray what is inside their heart. If somebody's boasting, it's telling you something that's in their heart. If somebody's criticizing, it's telling you what's in that heart. If they keep putting themselves down, it tells you something about what's in that heart. If they, if they, they keep generalizing and, and making sweeping stereotypical remarks, yeah, there's something in that heart. And you're looking for shadows. You don't want a shadow in a heart. It says of God, he, he doesn't change. He's, he, he's not like shifting shadows. And, uh, you know, when there's a cloud in someone's heart, when there's an issue that they're concerned with, there's an issue, um, there's a stronghold maybe in their mind. A stronghold is a, is a way of thinking that is anti-scriptural, anti-biblical. You'll pick it up. You'll pick it up if you listen. But it's not only the condition of the heart, because your heart actually qualifies you to minister or, or not. And um, But it's also the other details in the background. You know, it's like asking God for uh, wisdom beyond what the eye can see. Uh, you, you're picking up what people are not saying. You, you're picking up, and you're almost saying, God, I, I need to hear in the spirit. I need to hear... Uh, beyond what my reason is telling me, beyond what my intuition is telling me, I need you to speak to me. Speak to me. Let, let me listen. Let me listen while, while I'm busy leading people. If you're not a good listener, you're not going to be a good leader. You've also got to listen to uh, people's cries and, and people's celebrations. You've got to listen to those things and, and see where they're at. Because once you understand where someone's at, you can access that heart. You can... You can move, move, motivate them. You can inspire them. You can move them. You can, uh, you can relate to them. You can bring the gospel in there and it'll find traction because you, you understand what's going on. So that's the first skill, very important skill, to listen. Listen attentively. You know, Jesus, Jesus was a great listener. He, he asked more than 300 questions in the New Testament. He asked 300. Think about that. That's the Son of God, God Himself, asking mortal humans questions. Why? Because He, he, he was listening. He was listening and, and He was also teaching through His questions, actually. Uh, interestingly enough, he, he was asked quite a number, more than 100 questions Himself, if you round, round them up in the Gospels, and he, he only directly answered three. Most times, he, he answered a question by asking one. Great listener, listening listening to to the distress of people, listening to what other people weren't hearing. That's the one skill. Uh, the other skill is that of leading strong. Once you know and you've listened and you're constantly listening, a great skill in leadership is being decisive when you make a decision. Uh, the Bible says that a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And double-mindedness in a leader just brings instability to everybody behind him. I can remember when I was a, a young guy, I, I went to a, a boarding school to be a border master, and I knew nothing about children. My brother was a border master at the time. In fact, he opened the door for me to go and you know have a bit of a, a job there. And I remember him sitting me down. My younger brother sat me down saying, Grant, I've got one bit of advice for you. You know nothing about kids. I said, true. He says, they're going to run rings around you. I said, mm, we'll see about that. He said, listen, when in doubt, be confident. 
<laughs> so you might be saying, well, that's not, that's, isn't that the very opposite to what you've just been saying? When in doubt, he probably should have said to me, when in doubt, make sure you've listened, heard the answer, and then be confident. But this is what he was saying, is that when, you, when you're speaking to, to people in a leadership capacity, you got to you you pretty much got to be decisive and and make the strong calls that's the part of leadership that that most people don't like it's not a popularity contest you when you make the decision um stand with your decision now obviously you've got to have the humility about a change if you were wrong but i'm i'm talking about don't double guess you don't, don't second guess yourself if god's told you something if you've listened really well you've got a conviction uh, trust God to enable you to to lead strong, to be courageous. I remember going into a a staff meeting once and I was listening to some young preachers talking about the most important qualities of a church planter. And they had all sorts of ideas about an ability to preach and how to release leaders. And they you know, leaned over the coffee cup and said, God, what do you think? And I said, well, church planting, pioneering. I think the most important skill to have is, is courage. I said, well, that's not really a skill. <laughs> courage. Courage to stick to your convictions. Courage to go when God says go. Courage to stop when God says stop. Courage to act on what you hear God saying. If you can combine those two skills, listening and, and courage. Listening and leading strong, uh, you'll lead well.